Scarves and Spikes Transfer Special. My name is Sydney. That is Tommy along with me. And we have a transfer to talk about, Tommy. Exciting news. Garth is cooking, baby. And Boca, Garth is cooking. Garth and Boca are cooking. Uh, Jamal Tiare. Jamal Tiare is the new signing confirmed today by Atlanta United from Le Havre, uh, formerly of Le Havre. Out of contract after the season, but signed via free transfer, and he is joining the five stripes. Another player connected to France. Again, played with Le Havre, helped them gain promotion from Ligue 2 to Ligue 1 this past season. <laughs> you're laughing at me because of the pronunciations. But, I'm so uh, glad you're here because I can't pronounce anything. And yeah. I would get in so much trouble if I was in charge of this. So now you're here, I'm happy. Hey, there you go. That's why I'm here for our guests. But um, no, again, help them win promotion uh, to the top division in France. 24 appearances with Le Havre in 2022, 2023. 10 starts, four goals, three assists. So... Not a splashy signing, Tommy, but still, uh, seems like a rather serviceable, serviceable signing. Uh, 12 goals, 30, I'm sorry, 27 goals, 26 goals, 12 assists with Le Havre since 2018. And again, signing on a free transfer as he was out of contract after this season. But yeah, not a splashy signing. Um, seems like he'll be a backup. Won't be in the first team. Won't be in the starting 11, I should say, but... Yeah, a very under-the-radar signing, so to speak. But, yeah, it looks like it fills a need for Atlanta. Have they given the length yet? I believe 2024, so it's a year-and-a-half-long so, contract, I so believe. Year, so a year-and-a-half, that's good, because Barry's only here till the end of the season, right? People are not happy with Barry. He missed that penalty. He was brought in just for the penalty, and that made Barry even, even more just you know, fans were frustrated. You're looking for a long-term person that can, that can be that backup for Yakamakis because he is our future. I think this was, was a nice signing. We'll have to see how he fits in because I think we all have PTSD of all these backup strikers. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a long list, you know, like I see those teams with like quarterbacks, like all the quarterbacks they list on the back of a Jersey, like 15, (laughs) 20 names. We have that here in Cleveland, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's the way of Atlanta United as far as the backup striker. So, Yakamakis is, is prone to injury. We know that. So, you need to bring in someone that can hopefully be consistent. Barry is is just very short-term. Sounds like we got a long-term guy here. Yeah, the thing with Barry, and, you know, we talk about all the time, you know, he had a very strong run of form with Columbus a couple of years back has never been able to recapture that form. And I feel like Atleti United kind of gave him a flyer based on that alone. And he hasn't lived up to it by any stretch of the imagination. Had a banger of a goal a few weeks back. But outside of that, has not had the offensive impact that Atleti United were looking for behind Yakamakis. Again, he's not going to be on the first or starting 11 consistently. But you said it right there. That's excellent point. Yakamakis... His health, his fitness isn't quite there to the level that LA United would like and the fans would like. So when Yakimakis needs to come off, you have TRA coming in. And again, it looks like a pretty solid signing. Not not a person who will put in like 10 to 20 goals for you. That's not what he's here for. But um, yeah, look at the stats. Back to that eight goal seasons with the half. 2019 and 2020 and 2020 2021 and then the past couple of years he's had four goals five assists 2021 22 and then four goals three assists this past season so he can get the job done he he's here to do a job and again that's to back up yakamakis and if he's better than what barry has provided thus far at lady united will be in a pretty good spot if and when Yakamakis needs to step out because, you know, that hamstring has been really bothering him and, you know, it's been full go the past year or so. And coming out of this break, we'll see what happens with his health. But, yeah, this seems like um, 
at least looking at his stats, you know, a fairly solid signing. Again, not a splashy signing. You don't need a splashy signing at this part of the roster. So let's see what comes of it. And, you know, I'm a fan. I like it. Yeah, Gar said that they were looking for the for a backup striker, and, and Boca did as well. So let's give them both credit for it. We really weren't sure where they were going to go. I think a lot of people thought it was just going to be another MLS trade, right? Just go trade for someone else in the league. They go find someone on a free. My only question is, I, I assume he's going to need an international spot? Yes, I believe he does not have a green card as a fiesta, so they'll need to wait for his visa. I'd assume that it will be done. Hopefully by the Seattle match. Hopefully he wouldn't need him by the Seattle match. But I feel like once he gets his visa taken care of, he may not be long for maybe replacing Barry in that backup striker spot. So we'd be able to look out for that. But yeah, international spot for sure. So we have this, and I'm sure we're going to get into a couple more of the rumor players. But it seems like there's a lot of international players coming in here. And we might be lacking some spots here. I haven't done the yeah. math yet. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so you may see, maybe seeing a little um, a few transactions coming down the pike for Atlanta United. Um, administrative transactions, that is, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. But, uh, yeah, Jamal Tiare coming over as a free transfer from Leaf Le Havre. And, yeah. We'll see what happens with this visa and how long it will take for that to get approved. And it's kind of a French connection for Atlanta United. You had Muyamba signing out of League 2, and now you have Tiari signing out of League 2. So a little French connection going on for Atlanta United this far. And hopefully that continues. Hopefully the guys they're bringing over from France can pan out for Atlanta United. And this next 10 matches. <laughs> it's it's going to go quick. About. 10 matches, yeah. 10 matches plus this, going into 2024 too. It's crazy. Like we have this, you know, three-week break and then we're going to be coming back and it's going to be coming back fast. Like you, you've got a, you got a hard schedule coming up and, and you, you needed, you needed some good players to be coming in here to fill the roster. And this is what fans have been wanting. They've been wanting better players at specific positions. They're starting to clear some, some things up, right? Uh, Doug tweeted that they're trying to get the Moreno contract off the books. Some of the rumors that we're going to talk about here in a minute, maybe seems like that maybe that's happening because it's clearing up some more space because the question is how much space do we have? But Sydney, I have a question for you. What player is not coming to Atlanta United? <laughs> uh, Killing Mbappe. Okay. No, I'm, that's I'm one. Just but now give me, give me the other player that is not coming to Atlanta United. Oh, okay, I I know who you're talking about. Um, yeah, Diego Rossi. <laughs> it's over. Diego Rossi, yes, it's the saga, over. the Diego Rossi saga appears to be over on its way to Columbus. That, by the way, is a really good move for them. Um, but it looks like, according to Turkish media, uh, they they call it a draft, but maybe it's just a lack of understanding of how things work in MLS. And my gosh, people who have followed the league for years still don't know how some of the rules work. <laughs> to be fair, but it seems as if Atleti United had his discovery rights, which is weird because he played for LAFC, but yeah, for whatever reason, it appears they had his discovery rights. They had to trade him to Columbus. Uh, Turkish media is saying the number is $200,000, and yeah, Diego Rossi headed to Columbus, which is a pretty good signing for them. I mean, especially after losing Lucas Del Arion to the Saudi league <laughs> just suddenly out of the blue. <laughs> that was crazy. But like every morning he woke up every morning, there was another tweet and the fans were going, what's going on? Poor Doug, you know, Doug Roberson, I feel so bad for him because he's getting tagged in every one of these tweets. And you know, he's just reading it going, these guys, I can't wait until it's announced that he goes to any team, but Atlanta United, but mm -hmm. it's been a roller coaster because there was yes. so much smoke, but with there was absolutely no fire. Yep, exactly. And uh, credit to Doug, he said from the beginning, you know, this wasn't happening. And it turns out he was right. Not not doubting Doug at all, but yeah, 
he uh, we, he was right. We started to. <laughs> yeah, we started to doubt him. <laughs> no, nothing gets stuck. But um, yeah, it's not happening. Diego Rossi headed to Columbus Crew for I don't know how many years. That's that hasn't been finalized yet. But um, yeah, Tom Bogart, I believe, reporting it as well. And yeah, good good signing for them. Um, you know who might be coming to Lenny United though? Mbappe is. Okay. This bit's getting Saba. old. Saba. Saba. <laughs> yes. Finally. So, Nico Moreno, who broke the news of Pineda coming to Atlanta United, is reporting that Atlanta yeah, United finalizing a deal to bring Saba Libanije um, from Turkey to Atlanta United. Um, we already knew about that. We knew about him. It looks like. The final I's need to be dotted, T's need to be crossed to bring him over. So that is a player that should be announced in short order. We won't rehash it because, again, we've already talked about him. And, yeah, you can go back and watch our video. Just search for it and you'll be able to find it. Um, he's going to be a DP player though, right? Yes, it would assume that he, it, 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 it's assumed that he would be a DP player for like that third DP slot for Just Atlanta for this United. year, everybody, calm down. That's the rumor. <laughs> like... Just because right. I, I think I think the fans are freaking out about it because they're going and it's another Atlanta United overpay. Like one, we don't really know what he's capable of, right? But I think fans have been really stressed out because they're they're seeing DP, DP, DP. The rumors have been out there. They want to sign. They want to. They're planning on signing a, a high impact player. They're hoping it's him, but they're going to be able to buy him down likely immediately once the the winter begins. So. You know, we're li- very likely to have another DP slot open up, you know, this winter. Yeah. So maybe two slots. I mean, if it went Almarone leaves. I'm Almarone. Um, Almada leaves. So, yeah. Winter seems like the time when Atlanta United will do a lot if they're moving and shaking. And that's when Garth will have pretty much, hopefully, him and Book have cleared out some of those long bloated contracts and really be able to make the moves that we want to make. So, yeah, Saba looks like, for all intents, of pur- all intents and purposes, a done deal for a Lady United. Just a matter of it being announced. Another player that we have not spoken too much about, actually not at all about, is another player from League Day. Shande uh, Stiva. Uh, Portuguese, former Portuguese international, or youth international, I should say, 26 years old, um, started out um, in the youth system in Portugal, um, was a part of Sporting Youth Setup for a little bit, Sporting Lisbon for a little bit. Um, Latched on to Grimares, I believe is pronounced, for a few years, made his professional debut with them, first with the B team, their reserves, and then 2015 to 2018, had 26 appearances with their senior side. Signed with West Ham United, didn't quite work out. He was eventually lent to Aris, I believe, in Greece. Signed with Nottingham Forest, returning back to England. Played eight matches or had eight appearances with them 2011, 2012, or 2021, 2022. And then signed with Dijon, where he's been since 2022. 32 matches, six goals, three assists. With the Jones, so not a bad number. Um, again, has struggled a little bit with Forrest when he was with them. Um, signed for West Ham, eventually loaned, and had a pretty good run in Greece with Aris. But um, it looks like, according to Nico Moreno, Atlanta United trying to get that over the line as well. So was watching his video, uh, a video of his skills a little bit, a little bit before he came on, and. Pretty impressed. Seems pretty good on the ball. Pretty good passing ability, crossing ability, and what we need right now is someone who can reliably cross and create those chances for Atlanta United on the wings. That's something that um, Pineda has talked about, just strength on the wings, and it looks like Silva is going to be one of those players that can come in and help get things done on the wings. He can play forward too, by the way, so that's another thing to note. A lot of depth, which I think mm-hmm. we were kind of shocked that maybe this many signings had been possibly coming in because that's going to be four at this point, right? Four four signings, you know, you're starting to do, you know, the math in your head, where are all these, these players going to fit? I have no idea at this moment. 
but you're you're going into the this this well, as soon as the season starts back up, you're going on the road to Seattle, right? That it's a big game immediately. Like you need to get if all three are are coming in, you've got to get them in here ASAP. You've got to get this team ready. You have to figure out what your lineup is. Now, Mayumba, I mean, we'll talk about it tomorrow on our on our weekly show. But I thought he was fantastic. I, he was more than what I was expecting. I think a lot of fans have been just kind of wary of other players brought in. But, you know, just real quick about the transfers. This is the first really set group of players coming in under the new scouting and analytics group. So let's see what happens when you bring all these players in. Like what? How are they? How are they going to play? Because if three out of the four hit, right? Let's just say that. Then you think that this is going good, and this is what we've wanted, right? I mean, you're bringing four players, and people have been kind of scared of the front office bringing new people in. Well, this is this is the test. Let's see if this is working, because you know these guys probably just aren't you know half year rentals. They're probably going to be here for a few years. So I'm excited. I, I, I'm. We've been through a lot of bad times over the past month, right? Maybe even a couple months. Let's see what these guys can do for us on our playoff push. Yeah, let Garth do his thing. I mean, you're not going to hit on everybody, of course. But, yeah, Muyumba, I mean, it's one match, but he looked terrific, like he said. Uh, but, again, you know, this kind of French pipeline that's being built, TRA, Silva reportedly, um, Saba, I mean, he plays in Turkey, so uh, maybe that European pipeline being built of players that aren't, you know, this, this, this club's mindset used to be buy low, sell high. I mean, these aren't buy low, sell high players in my mind. These are players that can, like he said, you know, be here for a while, maybe three, four years, and really make a home in MLS, really learn the ins and outs of MLS, and help this team long term, you know. They've had some successes with the buy low, sell high um, mindset. Uh, Almirone, of course, and it's missed. It's been in the rear end a lot. Um, Barco, PT, uh, Joseph to some extent. I mean, Joseph was more long term, but you get the picture. Um, our real Jew this year. Uh, so, yeah, that philosophy has arguably had more misses than hits. And I think we've talked about it earlier in the season. Bring players in that can make a more long-term difference. They don't have to be splashy signings all the time. Players that have had you know, a lot of eyes on them as younger players and players you're looking to bring in to sell them off in a couple of years. Get some players in here that can contribute and be stabilizing forces for this team, I feel like. You know, with these sightings, TRA, Miyumba confirmed, and then Silva maybe, and Saba maybe. Uh, these are guys that can be here for the long haul. So, yeah, like you, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what these guys can do when they get on the field. Of course, visas and all that need to be sewn up before they play the Sounders. But, yeah, looking forward to seeing what these guys do on the field. Yeah, I, I don't think Pineda has the, the luxury of waiting and seeing because I think that's what you see on Twitter is that, you know, well, he's got to get, you know, acclimated to the team. We got to get him up and going. You don't have that luxury right now. You, you need to get these players up and ready and going ASAP because let's just face it, uh, quite a few people in that front office and coaching staff, their careers can depend on how these last 10 games and playoffs go. Um the, the coaching staff seemed pretty, uh, Pineda, you know, seemed pretty defeated after that loss of getting eliminated from League's Cup. So they've got to they've got to do something quick. They, they've got to make a run in this playoffs, I think, for, you know, some people to keep their positions and they're giving them the tools. They've got the tools now. Now can the players and the coaching staff get them to where they need to be? Yeah. So, yeah, we'll talk about it tomorrow on a regular show. Tyler will be along. It will maybe hopefully have some more news on actual signings. Tiara, of course, will dive into a little bit more, but maybe we'll have Silva officially signed and Saba officially signed. 
And if any other rumors pop up, any other news pop up, we'll let you know. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us here to this afternoon or this evening, this morning, whenever you're watching. For Tommy, for Tyler, I'm Sydney, and we will see you next time. So long. If, if you smell what the Garth is cooking. <laughs> so long, everyone. See ya.